وَلَهُمَا إِظْهَارُهَا فَلْتَعَارِفِي قَبْلَ الرَّبَاعِ مَا عَشْرَاتٍ خُذْ عِلْمَاهُ مِنْ إِبْغِي حَجَّاكَ وَخُفْ عَقِيمَهُ So here, we're going to move on to another topic now. Away from Noon Sakina and the Meme Sakina rules. Okay? لِلَّامِ الْحَالَانِ So they mention here that the Lam of Alif Lam. For example, so Alif Lam. And normally you'll see it before a noun like Al Kitab Al Kitabu The Book The in Arabic language. So they mention here Lilami Al Halan for this lam they're talking about. <coughs> the lam within the Alif Lam, the they mention Halan. There's two types or two options or two states okay قبل الأحرف depending on what letter it comes before so after this lam depending on what's the first letter like here we've got gaf yeah al kitab al ki ki so the gaf after the lam so depending on which letter comes after the lam Okay, there are two options or two states. Halan. The mention, Ulahuma, the first type. The mention, the first type is what? Izharuha. The first type is. Izhar. So that you know. So Alif Lam, okay, has two types we're talking about here. Now, the first type is Izhar. Qabla Arba'in. When it comes before four, ma asharatin, and ten. What's four at ten? Fourteen letters. So how many letters are there? Fourteen letters. How many letters are there in total in, tot in Arabic alphabet? Twenty-eight. So half of them we're going to be doing is hard. Okay, depending on which letters they are. What are these letters? They mention here. So, Lilami al Halan, the first line again. Lilami al Halan, the Lam has two states depending on what comes before it. Yeah? Qabla ahrufi. Ula huma, the first type. Idharuha fal ta'rifi. So that you can embed, so that you can comprehend. Qabla before Arba'a Ma'a Ashara Ashara and Arba'a are 14. Okay, the reason why they broke it up, not just the Sulaiman al Jamzuri kick, but it's also to balance the uh, poetry. Yeah, to give it a flow. Khudh ilmahu, take its knowledge. Then they mention, Minibri. حَجَّكَ وَخَفْ عَقِيمَهُ So min here, we're taking the literal meaning which is from. So when they say, خُذْ عِلْمَهُ min, Take its knowledge or take its understanding from. From what? إِبْغِي حَجَّكَ وَخَفْ عَقِيمَهُ So write that out. إِبْغِي Hajjaka wa khaf wa 
prima so let's count these letters now Alif 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 There you have 14 letters Ibri Hajjaka wa khaf aqimahu that it is the that is the code like yarmulun yes it is so ibri hajjak so perform your hajj with great sincerity, yeah? Perform your hajj with great khulus, fear of Allah, wa khaf and be fearful. Aqimahu, that you lose this reward, that it might be wasted. So do your hajj, because hajj, is it easy to do hajj? Costs 5,000, 10,000 pounds now, yeah? And even two, 300, 500 years ago, it was still expensive. The amount of ration and food you had to carry with you and go by foot. Yeah, so we've got aeroplanes now. They never had aeroplanes. And not everybody could afford an animal. And there's a risk. You're taking a donkey, you might die halfway. Then you're a, you know, it's going to cost you even more. <clears throat> so they would leave the animals for the family and they would go by foot. And then carrying your clothes and being in ihram as well. Yeah. Hajj was a very, very difficult thing um, to do. Okay, so they mention here, so seek to perform Hajj, yeah? have the intention and the determination to perform Hajj and fear that it might become Aqima fruitless. It might become void. Yeah? After all that hard work and on the way to Hajj and you're backbiting. You walk into the masjid to pray salah, but on the way to the masjid, you're backbiting. You arrive at the masjid 10 minutes early, you're in the masjid before your salah, you're backbiting. Yeah? So you've lost that reward. So there's no point you coming to the masjid. You should have stayed at home. At least you wouldn't have committed that sin. Yeah? Okay, you wouldn't get the salah of uh, reading in a jama'ah, but which is better to pray at home and not get the salah of the jama'ah and don't backbite. Yeah? So, Sheikh so Imam Jamduri threw out the poem the Uru is giving you Nasiha. <coughs> so, this is the first group. So, it's hard when these 14 letters come before. Then they mention Thanihima <coughs> and the second group. Is what? Ibram. The second group is Ibram. Fi Arba'i in also four wa asharatin and ten, meaning fourteen letters. Okay, then they mention the word Aidan also. So these are 14 letters also. Waram Zaha and Rams the code. Okay, Fai memorize. So memorize it's code yeah don't forget it and they mention tib thumma sil ruhman tafuz dif dha ni'am tib be good thumma sil ruhman and join connections reconnect visit your 
family members don't boycott your family uh, the ni'am and you would become very successful be hospitable to one who is bountiful yeah then they mention da'su adhannin zur sharifan lil karam leave bad suspicion stop thinking ill of your brothers and sisters stop presuming that they're against you stop presuming that they're bad for you yeah have good opinion of people and visit the noble for their kindness okay so zur sharifan to sharif here means noble sharif also is referred towards people who are elder in age yeah somebody who has a white beard so white beard they have wisdom they've lived a life you can go and talk to them you know when you're on a journey <clears throat> why do you follow your sat nav for your sat nav has never been on that route yeah but you follow the sat nav because the sat nav has been coded with your entire route yeah. you've been mentally programmed to follow it guide you yeah. but the most noble thing you could do is follow the guidance of somebody who's actually traveled that route who has actually been down that road many times he could give you better advice yes, if you take this route there's a lot of traffic take this route you're going to struggle yeah take this route there's no halal shops on the way your iftar is in an hour's time you're going to be stuck on a motorway take this route there's a halal place you'll reach there in an hour or break your fast have some nice food and there's a masjid pray your salah and then continue your journey the sat nav won't tell you that similarly they mention here zur sharifan visit the people from the ashraf ashraf also the ulama mention are the noble family members of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam they are also known as ashraf okay the noble family so here sheikh sulaiman al jamzuri could have been referring to one two or three meanings okay so the simple meaning is visit the noble for their kindness okay now similar to the verse that we done in ikhfa before remember the verse in ikhfa anybody <coughs> hold the verse in ikhfa It's the last verse in the Noon Sakina section. Sif the Thana Kam Jada. You should memorize it. Sif the Thana Kam Jada. Then. That's the second half. Good. But what's the first? Sif the Thana Kam Jada. Shoksun. Kod Sama. Dum Tayyiban. Be good. Dum Dum Tayyiban. Zid Fi Tukon Da Lima. Remember? So they were the letters of Ikhwa. So you have to remember the codes. The codes are the most important thing in the whole poem. To remember the code, which letters are which letters. Yeah? Because somebody asked me what are the Ikhwa letters, top of my head, I couldn't tell you. Because after you do 28, then after mentally <coughs> minus Yer Malun, minus Haruf al Halqiyah, minus the letter Ba. In the remaining, what are they? They'll have to go through all Alif, okay. Ba, you know. Ta is one of them, okay, that's one. Ta, Tha, 
then gym, gym, yeah. So I'll have to go through like a, a numpty, one by one, and I'll still probably forget. It's easy just to remember the code. So what's the code for this one? Ibri hajjaka wa khaf aqimahu. So what's the code for this one? The verse I just mentioned now. Tib thumma. Can you read it? Zul sharifan lil karam. Excellent. So that's the code for the idgham. So every single letter in the beginning of every single word in that phrase is a idgham letter when it comes towards alif lam of ta'rif. So they are your two groups. Then they mention, after confusing you with all that information, then Sheikh Suleiman al-Jamzuri come back towards naming them. Okay? They mention, <coughs> Wallam al ula the first lamb, which was Izhar, yeah? The first Wallam al ula Samiha Qamariya. The first one, we're gonna call it what? Maria, the letters of the moon. Maria. The second one is going to be what? Wallam al ukhra and the other lamb, Samiha Shamsiya. So they are your moon letters, these are your sun letters. <coughs> Let's look at some examples. So let's look at these two examples here. Huwal awwalu. Huwal. Huwal. We're reading the lamb. Okay. How long do we read the lamb for? Huwal awwalu. One haraka. Huwal awwalu. Rabbil alameen. Rabbil. So here, alif and lamb. Rabbil Alameen and Huwal Awwalu. Okay. If there was no Huwa, I was going to start from the word Awwal. Okay. How would I read the Alif Lam? Al. So this is always going to have a Fatha and Sakun. Al. Huwa, he, the first. Meaning, he is the first. Okay, Rabb, Lord, Al, the, Alam, world, and the Ya and the Noon is for plural, worlds. Lord of the worlds, meaning the Lord of the universe. Okay, so this is the Alif Lam. <coughs> so you're dropping the, <coughs> you're dropping the um, Alif, you're reading the Lam. And in both of these scenarios, you're doing Izhar.
Idhar means to make something apparent. Like in the nuns, like in the rules. An'amta. Make it apparent. Same with the memes, like in the rules. Idhar yeah? shafwi. To make it apparent. And now here again, Idhar. Idhar literally means, it's not a special name. <coughs> you know, like when <coughs> we name something, we don't name it special. Like, you know, pick a name out the hat. So whenever we name something, there's always a meaning behind it. Yeah? So, like, this is a white board. Why do they call it white board? Because it's literally white. Why do they call it board? Because it is a board inside. Yeah? They wouldn't call it like pink carpet. So, whatever name <clears throat> you give something, it has a meaning behind it. Okay? Unless you randomly make something up, <clears throat> like you design a mobile phone and you call it an apple. Yeah? So, certain things you probably get random names with random items, yeah? But something like this whiteboard, literally, it's, it is what it is. Similar with in Arabic, every single terminology that you see in Tajweed, it is literally what it is. Yeah, so even if you look at Makharij, if you look at Haruful Halkiya, yeah, they haven't given it some, you know, uh, glamorous name, just letters of the throat, full stop. Yeah. And then even the naming of every Makharij, yeah, Zalku Shafa, Haruful Halkiya, Nitaiya, every single one of them, Asliya has a particular name and it means something and it means relevant yeah, to its position the same with izhar so it's not because they run out of words in tajweed and they start using the same word izhar, idgham, izhar, idgham for everything to confuse us <clears throat> it's literally makes sense yeah? so here you, it's izhar because you're literally doing izhar yeah? literally you're doing izhar on the lam huwal awwalu Rabbil Alameen Al Kitab Literal is hard. <clears throat> Look at examples of Look at these three examples now. Now, in this scenario, you wouldn't read it as wal tariq, was sama i wal tariq. But how would you recite this? Was sama i wat tariq. What? What? So this lam here, we're doing idgham. Remember when I mentioned to you? The Quran part of the most vast topic discussed in Tajweed. Okay. So look, wow, fatha, lam don't read. So okay, so you're not reading the lam. The so, lam you don't read the lam into the letter ta. So wow, fatha ta, mushaddad. Okay, with the tashdid, ma fatha with a fatha, what, what ta, with alif sakina, harakatain. What ta ra kasma kasra li qaf kasra pi was so what ta riki okay so what you're not reading the lam similarly here ihdina yeah ihdina guide us upon what as sirat see how I read this now 
فهم ألف الصراط meaning the path but when I'm joining with the previous one إهدي the ألف after the noon also drops okay why because look ألف is ساكن next ألف is ساكن yeah لام is ساكن How are you supposed to read it? The orders are sucking letters. Remember when I mentioned yesterday? Silent. silent here. So when you got you will never ever have two silent letters together. Because you can't read them. The first one must be mutaharrik, must have movement. A E U. So here, Ihdi Noon Fatha Sad Mushadad Ma Kasr. Ihdi Nasi. Ihdi Nas. Sleep. Make sense? Yeah? So everything else is silent in between. So, إِهْدِنَا الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ What are Similar to this example again. Waw and Lam. After the Lam, there's an Alif. So this should read as Wala, Wala, and not that's how you should read. Wala Abdalin. Because you're joining them together now. So the, la, the alif after the lam, you're not going to recite that. Yeah? This alif and lam are going to become silent. Lam silent anyway. Because this alif is only there for joining purposes. When there's nothing before it, okay, then we're going to read this alif with a fatha. Yeah? Al Kitab. As soon as there's a word before it with a vowel on it, this alif automatically drops. This automatically drops. This automatically drops. Yeah? So the main thing here is the lam. So these all drop. Okay. Then the lam is sa sakin anyway. Lam is sakin. So you're not going to read that. So this lam is going to go into the ta. Becomes what tarik. Ihdi, this noon drops. The lamb we're not reading becomes what? Ihdi nos. Here, this lamb disappears. So wala, this disappears. Hence, why the letter dad has a shadda on top of it. Remember the shadda I talked about? Two letters are in there. You gotta press it. So wala, wala, wala. Not wala dalin, wala dalin. Do we commonly recite it? غير المغضوب عليهم ولا دا ولا دا ولا دا. Incorrect. Why? Because you've just got rid of the no uh, the the word the out of the Quran. Yeah. So wala dalin. Make sense. So these are known as Shamsiya. Okay. The so Shamsiya letters are the letters when they follow the Lam of Tarif, Alif Lam. Okay. The Lam of Tarif is not read but assimilated, done idhams with the Shamsiya letters. Like Washamsi wa duhaha. Wash. So, so how are you going to recite this? Okay. But this has already been done in the Quran for you. So when you open your Quran and look at Surah Shams, it's already been done for you. The Surah Tariq is done for you. Surah Fatiha, these, everything is done for you. Yeah. So even if we skip this lesson, you'll be reading it correctly. Because soon as you look at the Tashdeed, you're going to skip the silent letters automatically. Because you've been mentally programmed, you've heard the Imam in every single salah read, Ihdi nas sirat al mustaqim. So you're not going to open the mushaf all of a sudden and say, No, no Ihdi na al, al sirat al mustaqim. Okay? So these are known as Shamsiya wa Shams. And on that side, Wal Qamar. Wal Qamar. Any questions on that? Okay. 
to recite it as ihdi, ihdi. Yeah, okay. Incorrect. Because there's no kalkala, there's no vibration, uh, there's no nothing on the ha. So ha is from your um, hanjara, your voice box. The voice box is in your throat. To make the echo sound, you're reading it below that, from your chest. So all you're doing is opening your uh, vocal cords as wide as you can, and you're allowing a gush of it to come out. Like, وَالشَّمْسِ wadu ha 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 وَالْقَمَرِ إِذَا تَلَهَا وَالنَّهَارِ إِذَا جَلَّهَا I'm out of breath already. I barely read three ayah. So that, you're supposed to hold the ha. So, وَالشَّمْسِ wadu ha 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 Now, you got to make sure you differentiate between the ha and the ha. The halwa. Yeah? Ha. So how are you going to do that? وَالشَّمْسِ wadu ha 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 Not ha. So, إِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطُ mustaqim. Incorrect. And some people, I've heard it, massive echo vibration on the ha. So, very short, very soft and sharp at the same time. So, إِهْدِنَصْ إِهْ إِهْ إِهْدِنَصْ ذِي Not de. إِهْدِنَصْ صِي رَا طَلْ Yeah? Now, not طَلْ I'm reading the lam full mouth as well. The ta is full mouth, lam is empty. طَلْ مُسْتَ قِيم قِيم not قِيم yeah. so when Qaf has a fatha on it it is, the, it is in its mightiest state Qa Qa wal qamari wal qamari when it has a dhamma it's slightly reduced yeah Q Q slightly reduced when it has a kasra it is at its lowest stage yeah, so when you're reciting the Qaf with the Kasra, Mustaqim, almost like a Kaf. Yeah, almost like a Kaf, but not a Kaf. So basically, imagine. It's very important to study Makharij and Sifat al-Huruf. Very important. So imagine that's your tongue, and that's your throat. Okay? So this is your border lines. <coughs> okay. So here we have the Hamza and Ha. Ayn and Ha. Then Ghain. And then Kha is right at the top here. Okay. Gha. Gha. A bit lower. Kha is above. Okay. So when you actually open each Makhraj up, the Ghain is actually lower than the Kha. Kha is the highest Makhraj. And just after the Kha, is the letter Qa. So these three are actually literally next to each other. I'm not a doctor, but if I could get the uh, throat and the tongue out for you, um, they're literally next to each other. I'll try to bring my um, sculptures in next week, Monday, inshallah. You can have a look at it. Um, because of what I want planning to go through Makharij and Sifat, hence why I didn't bring them. But I'll bring them from Monday. So Ghain and Kha. And after the Kha, literally just over that line, so it's literally next to each other, is the letter Qaf. Then after the letter Qaf, is your letter Kaf. Okay, so now let's magnify this. So now we're looking at a bird's eye view. Okay, so that's your border line between your throat and tongue. And there's your tongue. Your barks are pure. That's your throat at the bottom there. So if he said, and that's your top end of your throat, so groin was from here and your heart is from there. So this is your tongue now. As soon as you're coming into the tongue, your calf is there and your calf is here. So if I were to draw a line between these two, like that. Okay? That's your Qaf Makhraj. That's your Kaf Makhraj. Mm. Where does your Kaf Makhraj finish? Probably about here somewhere. And then it's Sheen, 
Jim, and yeah, that finish is probably about there. Okay, now let's magnify this again into a bigger picture. So now we're looking at now this is your calf and this is your calf. When the calf has a fatha, it's recited from here. When it has a dhamma, it's recited from here. When it has a kasra, it is recited here. And the border lines between kaf and kaf now. Make sense? So if you zoomed in, so ka, ka, right at the back. Ka, ku, slightly before. Ki, ki, almost at the border lines of the kaf. And ki, ki, all I have to do is lower back of the tongue. Ki, ki. Ki becomes a calf. Okay? So calf, and that's probably one of the most difficult little letters and big, 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 humongous um, Qurra in Egypt have struggled with that. Okay? So never read a calf of the Kasra from the back of the Makhraj. Like, Qi, Qi. Okay? It's not natural. It's hard, but people do do it. Because especially when you're starting in the journey of the Jweed and you don't listen to reciters. You just listen to your teacher, he's taught you the rules. So you're going away, ko, ko, heavy mouth, a full mouth letter. It's a heavy letter, mighty letter, ko, ko. And you automatically, when you put kasra on it, you're thinking, ko, ki. Yeah? But it changes, like, for example, ghi. ghi. Sounds different. It's supposed to sound different. Kha, ghi. It's still a full mouth letter, but kasra, look, what does fatha mean? No. Fataha? To open. Yeah. So you're opening what? So remember what I said to you, it's hard we use that word because it means something like whiteboard. Yeah? So now think of fatha. What's fatha got to do with the line above? Think. What's the connection? No. Because Dhamma is also open mouth. You don't close your mouth with Dhamma, do you? So what's Fatha got to do with the actual Fatha? Think. No. The Fatha means to open. So what are you actually opening? Sound. Because without the Fatha, you can't read anything. How are you going to read Ba? Is it Ba, Bi, Bu? It's got no sound to it. It's just a letter. Yeah? So how do you open the sound? With a fatha. Hence why we call it a fatha. We're opening the sound. Ba. Default. Ba. So when you teach a child um, Arabic language or Quran, what do you teach him first? A, ba, ta, tha. Why are you opening the sound? Once they've learned the opening sound, then what do we teach him? Dhamma. Now, what does Dhamma mean in Arabic? Dhamma means to caress, hug, to caress something, to close something. Yeah? Like in fiqh, they mention uh, the word uh, Dhamma for Dhamma Suwar, meaning join Surah Fatiha and the Surah after it, like Surah Ikhlas. Bring them together. Yeah? Don't, leave, don't make a massive gap. Or Dalin, half an hour later. Yeah. So bring it close. I mean, Amin. Yeah. So dom dom masur. Yeah. So dom means to crest, bring to close, bring close. So how does that connect with the dhamma? So what are you bringing close? Where are you cresting? Where are you hugging? Bu. Yeah. So, dhammu shafatain. So you're caressing your lips and you're bringing them close. You're hugging them. Yeah. The first one was what? Fatha. Opening. So you're opening the sound. Yeah. So your lips are parted. Now you're bringing them close. 
Hence why it's called Dhamma. Okay, Kasra. What does Kasra mean literally in Arabic? To break. Kasr. Okay. Kasra means to break. So what are you breaking now? Yeah. So you're breaking that sound. So remember that the Fatha sound? Now you're breaking that Fatha sound. So ba B. Ta ti. Tha ti. Ko ti. You're breaking that sound. So there has to be a difference. Make sense? Fatha, Dhamma, because when you're teaching children, explain to them why it's called a Fatha. Not just because it's Fatha. Inshallah. Okay, the last line. They give you a little warning here. Wa'adhiranna. <coughs> Wa'adhiranna. Same word again. Izhar. Yeah, same word. They mention here. Wa'adhiranna. <coughs> and do izhar. Do izhar on what? Lama fi'alin. The lam in the. When it comes in a verb form. Remember, this was for nouns. Al kitab. Kitab is a noun. Yeah? Ism. So these are for ism. So they mention that when the lam the, that comes in the verb, what do we do? Azhiranna. Do izhar on it. Yeah? They give the example. Fi nahwi. In the examples of kul na'am. Kul na'am. Kul lam. Kul na'am. And also, wa kul na, kul na. And also, wal taqa, wal taqa. So they give you these three examples. Now let's look at these three examples closely. If you look to your right hand side, page 53, ibri hajjaka wa khat aqimahu. That was a code for. Izhar, right? Ibghi hajjaka wa khaf aqimahu and all the letters are written around it. Yeah? They were for izhar. Okay. Now the three examples they've given you, let's look at them. Fi nahwi kul na'am. So here the lam sakina, kul. And after it there's a noon. Can you see the noon in the izhar letters? No, one. Okay. Next one, wa kul na. Again noon. Can you see in the, in the izhar letters? No. And wal taqa. Can you find me a ta in ibghi hajjaka wa khaf aqimahu? Is there a ta? No. So what's a noon in a ta? Shamsi or kamariya? Is it izhar letter or is it idgham letter? Is it, huh? It's an idgham letter, right? Sister, you look confused. I'll repeat it again. Look. The uh, Sheikh Suleiman Jamzuri in the last verse is saying, Wa azhiranna and do izhar on the lam, okay, which lam? And he gives you examples here. The lam that is found in a verb. So if you don't know what verbs are in Arabic, fa'al yet, yeah, bypass. Just think of it this way that if the lam comes in in the form of like, kul na'am, wa kul na, wal taqa, yeah. Here, in all three examples, two letters have been used, a noon and a ta after a lam. So the noon and the ta, do we merge them? Because normally we would merge them. Okay, I'll give an example where you merge them.
Okay. Um. If you look at these two examples, one, am I reading the Alif Lam? No. One, here, what, what, am I reading the Alif Lam? No. Alif Lam here, I've done what? It's Ram into, not Alif Lam, Alif drops, the Lam has been put into the Ta. Okay? Idham. Here, Alif drops. The Lam here, I put it into the Ta and then Idham. So wherever there's a Ta or a Noon, it's one of the 14 letters of Idham. That makes sense, yeah? Okay. Now, Sheikh Sulaiman Jamzuri is saying, on three words he's given you in the poem, he said, <coughs> He's giving me these three words. Okay. But these are not nouns, they're verbs. Okay. <clears throat> so here, kul, what does kul mean? Say something. Say, say. Kul what? Naam, yes. Yes, sir. So kul, say, is a verb. Wa kul na means what? The same word again, kul, kul. Na, we. Okay, so we said. Okay, now look. Here there's a lamb, kul, after the noon. It should have been an idram. Ka, uh, lamb again, noon after it. It should have been an idram. Lamb again, ta after it. It should have been an idram. All these three scenarios, naturally you think it's an idram. Yeah? But Sheikh Sulaiman al Jamdur is saying, Make sure you read the lamb clearly and do what on it is har. Why? It's so easy to make a mistake. The makhraj of lamb and noon are very, very close to each other. Very, very close to each other. They're not the same makhraj. Okay? They're very close in makhraj. Some scholars do have the opinion that lamb, noon, and ra is one makhraj. Like Imam Farra. Okay, he had the opinion that Lam and Noon and Ra is one makhraj. Imam Ibn Jazari, Rahmumullah, had the opinion that Lam is a makhraj of his own, Noon has a makhraj of his own, Ra has a makhraj of his own. They're not from the same makhraj. Okay? And that's the dominant opinion, and that's the opinion that I and we and everybody around the world follows. So Lam and Noon are very close in makhraj. So to do idgham, they have to be very close. Yeah? Like, it is, it's, it's, it's easy. But try to merge, like, uh, pink pen. Do it the wrong on that. Pink. <laughs> then, p -p 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 pen. You can't do it. Hence why it's not been done in English language, has it? Yeah? So, the, you, where you're assimilating, is for what somebody mentioned yesterday. Why do we assimilate things? It is and it's 
to make it easy, tasheel. Similarly in Arabic language, we do idgham to make it easy. Yeah? So here, lam and noon are close in makhraj, so we would normally do idgham and make it easy. But because this is a verb and not a noun, so here we have to read the lam. So Sheikh Sulaiman al-Jamdur is saying that this is where we make common mistakes. We normally read this as Kul Naam. Yeah? Kul Naam. Kul na so we start off with the Lam and then switch into a Noon and carry on. Mix them and merge them. Yeah? We're saying no. Do Izhar on this. Kul Naam. Kul Naam. An Amta. An Amta. An. You don't know Izhar. Kul Naam. Make sure you don't assimilate them. Don't do idgham. Don't make that mistake. Here again, wa kulna, kulna, incorrect. Yeah, especially when you read the Quran at hundred miles per hour in Tarawih. Yeah, wa kulna tukhulu, wa kulna tukhulu, wa kulna tukhulu, wa kulna, kulna. So you haven't done idhar on that. Yeah. So wa kulna, wa kulna. Kul na. So see, even my mouth changes. Kul na. So differentiate. Do is har on the lamp. Here. Wal. Wal taqa. Now, lamp and ta are very close in makhraj as well. Yeah? So lamp is further in your mouth and ta is more towards the tip. So, wal taqa. Wal taqa. Wal taqa. Don't read it as. Waltaqa. Waltaqa. Yeah, like wealth. Yeah. So don't just brush over it. So Sheikh Sulaiman al Jamduri is warning you on these, we're using these three words. Kul na'am. Wa kul na. Waltaqa. Waltaqa. And it sounds more beautiful. It sounds more eloquent. Yeah. Kul na'am. Kul na'am. Wa kul na. Waltaqa. Waltaqa. Rather than Waltaqa. I'm making it into like a cocktail. Make sense? Anybody doesn't understand that? So they are your Shamsiya and Qamariya. If you look at page number 55, <coughs> page number 55 at the top. <coughs> so about this, these three words here, it mentions here, this is the lam, so we're talking about this lam here, this lam. Here and this lamb here. That's the lamb that we're talking and referring about. Yeah? So mentions here, this is the lamb that appears in a verb. Its ruling is that it must be pronounced. It must be pronounced without idgham. You don't understand? I'll explain to you after class. Okay? Is that okay? So, <clears throat> the lam in these three verbs, they must be pronounced. So this is a verb. This is a verb. Okay. So definite and indefinite, but it always be there. Yeah. So it all, so in um, for example, izhar, yeah. it's gonna be there, yeah. but in idgham it won't be there. Yeah. 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 
Yeah. The sister is explaining that the alif lam, okay, it comes on a noun, okay, and it's uh, not always there. So it could be al kitab or it could be, be just kitab. This is a noun, <coughs> so the lam will always be part of the verb, okay? So it's never going to go away. So you could change it like kul, <coughs> qala, qalu, kult. Yeah. It's always going to be there. It's never going to change. Inshallah. So, Lamul Fel. So, they've given some examples here. Some more examples. Like, Il Taqa. Il Lam. Il Taqa. Taqa. Kul Na. Kul Naam. Am Hil Hum. Am. Hil hum. Yeah? Yal abun. Yal abun. Wata wakkal. Ala Allah. Yeah? Wata wakkal. Ala Allah. Now, if you look at the second line, Am hil hum. You're really going to make a mistake on that. Yal abun. You're really going to make a mistake on that. Watawakkal ala Allah. You're really going to make a mistake on that. Why? Because the lam in amhilhum, the lam in yalabun, and the lam in tawakkal ala Allah, okay, is followed by a letter that's well away from its makhraj. Yeah? So amhil, lam from the front. Where's the ha from? Very far. It's like the other side of the world. Yal Abun again, like the other side of the world. Watawakkal ala Allah again, like very far. So you, it's, it's the chances of you assimilating these two, okay, are very very rare, okay. But on the first line, il taqa il taqa very easy to make that mistake, okay. Qul na very easy to make that mistake. Kul na'am, very easy to make that mistake. They are common mistakes. Hence why Shaykh Sulaiman al-Jamzuri rahimullah only gave these as examples. Yeah? He only gave you three examples. And the reason why he gave you these three examples were because they're the most difficult and where the common mistakes are made. Okay. Next. The lam of imperative tense. Lamul amr. To order. Yeah? This is the lam that appears at the start of some imperative verbs <coughs> and creates the meaning of command. To command something. It is normally maksur. Okay? Like, liya'mal. Liya'mal. He must work. However, it is if it is preceded by one of the following, then it becomes sakin. So there's three words or three um, uh, um, letters or words or particles or whatever you want to call them. If they come before this lam, the lam will become sakin. So if you look at these three ayahs here, wal yat. So this was originally what? Li. Lam had a kasra underneath it. Okay? Because the wow, it takes a sukun. And same with li ya'mal becomes fal ya'mal. Fal ya'mal. So fal, originally it was li ya'mal. And thummal yaqta. This was originally what? Liyakota Li So I wouldn't worry too much about the verbs and nouns. Okay. The Sheikh Sulaiman Jamdurus mentioned these three examples to be careful on. Okay, but if you haven't really studied Arabic grammar, um, then it's quite difficult to comprehend this um, last verse.
Any questions on that? Okay, so this is the, literally the halfway point of Tuhfat al-Fal. So you're literally halfway through. After this, we have two main topics now. We're going to go through Idgham in much more detail. Much more detail on Idgham. And then we're going to do Madud, the stretching. And then it's the Khatima and it finishes. So there are your next two topics. Okay. So we'll start the Idgham today. Okay. Um, but before I start the Idgham, I'm going to go through the Makharij with everyone. Okay. And the basic Sifat. I'm going to try to wrap it up within the next 50 minutes. Okay. So if you don't understand, put your hand up, I'll stop. Okay, so I'm going to presume that you're understanding, so I'm going to try to rush through it. Okay. So then when we do the... So to understand <coughs> basic idgham, the reason why I keep coming back to idgham and asking you that the lam and the noon are very close in makharaj, they're very close, because idgham needs this closeness. Yeah? To assimilate, there has to be similarity between the two letters. Okay? And there's only two ways they could be similar. One is in makharaj, literally, or two in their characteristics. So it's important to understand both. If everybody turns to page number eighty six, eighty six. So I'm going to try to fly through it. Makhraj. Okay, so Makhraj is singular, makharij is plural. Yeah? Makharij means one, makharij means many. Okay. And it refers to the actual place where the letters of the Arabic language originate. Okay. So the way I normally describe it is where they're born from. Yeah? Where the letter is born from. Place where the letters of Arabic uh, language originate, also sometimes called as the points of articulation in English. When you read the modern um, English that read books, they use the word articulation to articulate some things, a point of articulation where the actual articulation takes place. According to Ibn al-Jazari, rahimahumullah, there are 17 makharij in total and 29 Arabic letters originate from them. Okay, so we're talking about 28 all the time. Yeah, so we're not classifying alif as a letter, okay, but as a mad. To include alif, it becomes what? 29. It is important to learn the names of the Arabic letters, parts of the tongue, mouth and teeth before learning the makharij. So these next two or couple of pages, you need to memorize every single word, either in English or either in Arabic, that's entirely up to you. But you need to know where they are and what they are. So the tongue is divided into three major parts, okay? The top surface, three major parts. So aksal lisan, which means the furthest part of the tongue. So per, furthest part of the tongue from what? From the opening of the mouth. Okay. What does aksa literally mean? It means the furthest. Like masjid al aqsa. So masjid al aqsa is what? The furthest masjid from what? Al haramain. Makkah, Medina, masjid al aqsa. 
So Masjid Al-Aqsa is where? In Palestine, the furthest place from the other two. Wasatul Lisan means, Wasat means middle. Yeah? So Wasat literally means middle, and Wasatul Lisan, the middle of the tongue. Tarfu Lisan, okay, which means the front. Front of the tongue. So your tongue is divided into three parts. Your back of your tongue, middle of your tongue, and the front of your tongue. Then the top tip, yeah? right at the front tip, that's called Ra'sul Lisan. Ra's literally means head. Okay? So head means Ra's. But in Arabic language, they don't use the word Ra's literally all the time. Like, for example, the Prophet Sallallahu stated in a beautiful narration, Ra'sul Hikmah Makhafat Allah. Yeah? Ra'sul Hikmah. The head, literally, the head of wisdom. Makhafat Allah is to fear Allah. So here the Prophet is not talking about the physical head of wisdom. Yeah? What it means the peak of wisdom. So Ra's mean peak, the top, the you know the top uh, like <coughs> Ra'sul Jabal. Yeah? Ra'sul Jabal means the head of the mountain. So the mountain doesn't have a head. We're talking about the peak. Yeah? <coughs> so here we're talking about Ra'sul Lisan, it doesn't mean the head of the tongue. Tongue don't have a head. So we're just talking about the tip. The tip is known as head. So Ra'sul Lisan, also known as Muntaha. Muntaha means where it's finishing. Intaha. Yeah? So Muntaha Hafat al Lisan, where the side of the tongue finishes, is called also the head. So what's the side of the tongue? You see the side here now. Hafat al Lisan. So Hafat al Lisan. Is the side. So hafa literally means side, edge. Yeah. So like an edge of a table would also be referred to as hafa. Okay. So hafa to lisan, edge of the tongue. Then adna adna means small, very tiny, minimum. Yeah. Like fakana qaba kausini aw adna aw adna aw adna means what? When the Prophet ﷺ went to Mi'raj, Prophet ﷺ and Allah were what? Oh, Adana, very close to each other. Okay? So adana means very small. Like we say in Urdu as well, I to ek adana sa I am a very small person in status, in piety. Adana, I'm, I'm just small, I'm just little. So adana hafat al means the small hafat al meaning the closest to the front. Ra's al Yeah? near part of the edge, approximately where the tongue starts to curve. So where your tongue, start, tongue starts to curve, for the front, the starting of the curve, and that's your front starting. Yeah? So you need to understand that. Side of the tongue, uh, near front side, yeah? and then the tip, front part of the tongue, middle part of the tongue, back of the tongue. Teeth are also divided, okay? For every guardian is a dentist. You've got two um, teeth right at the front. I normally call them the Bugs Bunny teeth, yeah, or Peter Rabbit teeth. So there are your two teeth right at the front. <coughs> your incisors. They are known as a thanaya. Thanaya, which literally is from the word dual anyway, yeah? Two. So a thanaya, then al ulya means above. Sufla means low. So Athanaya, the two front ones. Then Ar Rabaiyat. Rabaiyat is from the word for anyway. Arba'a. Okay? So meaning what? The next two. One on this side and one on the, on the, on the opposite side. Okay? So the third and fourth teeth are known as Rabaiyat. Then Al Anyab. Anyab are your uh, Dracula teeth. Now you have these two little V's on each side of your mouth here, the Dracula ones. They are called um, Al Anyab. After that, you've got the beautiful teeth that we use, probably the second most after the, our grinding teeth for food, is the laughing teeth. Yeah, Dawahik. Okay, so you got Dawahik, it's gone into green now. Yeah, green color. Dawahik are your teeth. When you laugh, 
the teeth that become visible. You're not going to see anything behind the dawahid teeth. Then you dawahid, your laughing teeth. After that, you got tawahin, which you have three. Then your grinding and hard working teeth, the one that we use the most, okay, to eat our boti and roti. And the last one are an nawajid. Nawajid are your right at the back, your wisdom tooth. You may have it, you may not have it. Okay, so these are all your teeth. You don't need to remember every single name. The most important one that you need to remember are your front teeth. Yeah, Thanaya, Ulya. They're the most important ones. Along with your Addawahik and all the ones behind. When you combine them, to combine them together, on the far left hand side, you've got a word written there, Mawlas, and the Arabic word, word is al adras the word Al-Adras, don't forget that. They're your key words. So Al-Adras and Athanaya Ulya. Or Athanaya Sufla. They're the most important that you need to remember. You don't need to remember, oh, this is my wisdom tooth, and this is my Dracula teeth, and this is my this tooth and that tooth. Don't worry about it. Let the dentist worry about that. Next page. Your palate. Your palate is the roof of your mouth. The roof of your mouth. In Arabic it's called Hanak. Ha, Noon and Kaf. Hanak. Hanak al A'la, the upper palate. Okay? The one that's above your tongue. You also have a, another Hanak, which is the lower one underneath your tongue, which we don't really use in uh, speaking. So it's not quite, it's not relevant to Tajweed. So we're just looking at Hanakul A'la, the upper palate. In Urdu it's called Talu. Ta, Alif, Lam, Waw. Talu in Urdu. In English it's called a palate. So now this two is divided into parts, okay? This has got four different parts. The first part is Alitha. Alitha. So Alitha, these are your gums. Gums where your teeth are screwed into, or where your teeth actually are born from, okay? One or the other. After the litha, you've got like a little bridge. Yeah? If you roll your tongue back, if you put your teeth on your thanaya, ulya, the inner surface, and roll your tongue back. So you've got the gums first. After the gums, you've got like a little um, bridge area where you've got like a bit of that, and there's your teeth. So this little bridge area here, okay, this is called Muqaddamul Hanak. So Muqaddam in Arabic literally means what's been brought forward. Okay, what's been brought forward. Like when you say Muqaddima, Muqaddimatul Kitab means what has been brought forward from the book, meaning the introduction to the book. Yeah? So Muqaddim means brought forward. Like when you have a Sheikh, a Pisab, I say, this is the muqaddim. What does muqaddim mean? The one that you're going to meet first. Who's going to say to you, no, 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 mate. Sheikh's busy, mate. Sheikh's sleeping. He's not going to let you go in. That's called a muqaddim. The ones at the front. So here when they say muqaddamul hanak, so muqaddamul hanak is the first part that you're going to come, which is the bridge area. After that, you've got two more parts. Number one, al hanakul azmi. Azm in Arabic means bone. Yeah? Bone. So, al hanakul azmi means the bony part, the strong part of the palate, which is right in the middle of your mouth. Yeah? Around this area here. So, this is your hanakul azmi. Hanakul azmi, the reason why it's bone, because when you're chewing your food, if that was soft, your food will pierce into your palate, into your uh, hanak. Hence why you have a bone here, and it's so strong. That can withstand a lot of force. Yeah? You could eat anything. Pistachios are quite hard, almonds are quite hard. Especially when you're biting them, they become very sharp. Okay? They won't go into your hanak. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created you, given you a bone to protect that. After this part, it becomes softer. The soft piece of meat at the back of your uh, hanak. 
That's called hanak lahmi. So hanak lahmi is a soft meaty part. Okay. So this part of the hanak is used to chew the food because the bone is strong. The back part of the hanak, the palate, is a soft meat which is used to swallow the food, to crush the food down your food pipe. So you got a litha, which are your gums, muqaddamul hanak, which is the bridge area of the um, hanak, of the palate. And then you've got hanak al azmi, which is the bony part, hanak al lahmi, which is the um, soft meat part. Hanak, the roof of your mouth. So if you roll your tongue up, you're in the roof of your mouth. What you use when you're eating chocolates. Yeah? So the roof of the mouth is called a hanak. The reason why I'm using the word hanak, 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 so I want to drill into your head hanak. Not halak. Yeah? Not your throat. Hanak. Ha, noon, kaf, hanak. Yeah? Which is basically a palate. You, you know, your roof of your mouth. So they're your important terminologies that you need to memorize. Easy to memorize is by teaching. Go home, teach your brothers, sisters, children, parents, grandparents. Good luck. Teach them. That way you get good practice. Even if they don't understand. Repeat it again, repeat it again, repeat it again. Okay, page number 89. Okay, page number 89, Al-Halq. Okay? So Al-Halq, the incredible Halq that we've spoke about in the beginning of the Tuhfat al-Athfal, okay? which is quite relevant to the Noon Sakina and Tanween rules. So Halq is also divided into three parts. Okay? So the first part, Al-Aqsa Al-Halq, Aqsa Al-Halq is called the larynx. Larynx is your, literally your voice box. This is the furthest part of the throat from the mouth, meaning the opening of the mouth, which contains the vocal cords, okay? And sits at the top of your windpipe, the breathing pipe. Because as the air is gonna pass through the uh, larynx, it's gonna generate a sound, yeah? I'm just breathing. Add a bit of sound to it. Squeeze that uh, larynx. Uh, 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 I've created a sound. Then I need to redirect that to a makhraj. Uh, See how it's transferred from there to close your mouth and then do the same, same sound. Uh, see? This is by closing my mouth, but you hear the bar, don't you? The texture bar comes in. Look, uh, but yeah, or like scene, scene for example. So where's the scene? Uh, so as soon as I close the makhraj, automatically it generates the sound. Yeah. So how is the letter born? You need the breath. You need the vibration of the larynx, the hanjara, the voice box, and then you need the particular makhraj to make contact, and you've got a letter. What's the halq? <clears throat> Remember the word epiglottis, the mechanism that we use to eat, yeah? to swallow. Epiglottis, this is the middle part of the throat. The epiglottis is a flap near the root of the tongue and above the larynx, which closes the windpipe. It closes the windpipe, why? So no food, you know, water can go down the windpipe and kill you. When swallowing food, in order to prevent food from entering the, into the lungs, was the halq, the middle part of the throat. Next page. You got a little diagram there showing you how food works. So the yellow round gulab jamun looking like squashed. Okay? So you've put it into your mouth, you've chewed it, now you're going to swallow it, okay? And you can see the epiglottis 
has come up and it closes the air pipe and it allows the food pipe to open up which is the back of your neck yeah so it opens up so diagram number one the food's coming down diagram number two it closes the air passageway so there's only one way the food can go which is pushed to the back of the neck into the food passageway and down it goes after you swallowed it as soon as you swallow that movement the food is probably still going down the food pipe and that's it the epiglottis has done its job yeah and it opens back up again to allow you to breathe so hence why it's impossible for you to breathe and swallow at the same time yeah impossible because your epiglottis is going to be either open or closed yeah so you're not going to be able to hold it hover it in the middle okay. yeah, you would yeah and that's why you know when you have like um uh, see when you're eating spicy food and uh, sometimes you get like a sharp ear in your throat it's like someone just stabbed you yeah that's because your epiglottis was very very lazy in doing what it was doing and a bit of that spice that masala yeah touched onto your breathing side yeah so your uh, your windpipe as soon as that little bit of masala a bit of chili goes down there boom you've had it that's why in the arab world they don't eat chilies especially the reciters they don't eat chili at all so you taste their food it's like there's nothing in there and they're happy why because they don't want to damage their voice box and their recitation as soon as they have the spicy food they can't recite after that yeah unless you're accustomed to it and you get used to it like yemenis they eat a lot of spicy food yeah the last one adna al khalq adna means the closest part closest part of the throat to the mouth just behind the i'm not going to try to pronounce the word those who know how to pronounce it can can do so this is the nearest part of the throat to the mouth which is used to be the uh, root of the tongue so closest part to the root of the tongue yeah so when your mouth finishes okay then it becomes the root of the tongue it goes into the throat so it's one piece of meat from here to here is one piece of meat so it's not like the tongue finishes and then there's like a a joint here and then a new piece of meat starts it's the same muscle that comes from the throat into the mouth of the tongue and that's known as your adna adna means the closest the closest part from the opening of the mouth make sense okay back to makharij again now we've got another half an hour we should be able to complete makharij and the next week I'll start off with sifat so now makharij <coughs> articulation points number 1 is al jawf okay al jawf al jawf is the empty space within your mouth the empty vacuum area empty area inside your mouth is known as jawf okay and from the jawf three mad letters okay three mad letters are recited from who are born from which are alif waw and ya okay i normally read them the opposite way waw alif and ya and call them why letters you just remember so the madud letters the mad letters are the why letters waw alif and ya or alif waw and ya or ya waw alif whichever sequence it doesn't really make a difference so look at the examples here ba so ba is the lips but look at the sound after the ba ba so from the vacuum of the mouth jawf bu ya u sound here b e again from the open jawf area so the jawf area is in your mouth your throat all of that vacuum area all the way from here from your voice box all the way to the front all of this is your jawf 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 okay that's your makhraj number 1 makhraj number 2 aksa al halq so 
اكثر حال حمزه انحاء اوكي ذا لتس حمزه انحاء ابرنانس فروم دي لارينكس سو لارينكس از يور فويس بوكس which is the furthest part of the throat without raising the root of the tongue or narrowing the air passageway meaning the air passageway was where the epiglottis remember so without narrowing the epiglottis without raising the back of the tongue without any movement a ha a ha a ha that's how you pronounce the letter hamza and ha a ha na ha ha a a don't change or move anything keep it as natural a ha simple the next one was the halq the middle part of the throat the letters ain and ha ain and ha these two letters here are pronounced by the middle part of the throat by narrowing the air passageway how do you narrow the air passageway you start swallowing mechanism epiglottis when you swallow yeah so you're going to part close it you're going to narrow the air passageway you can't physically squeeze your throat yeah people don't say yeah yeah squeeze your throat on the ain how much push squeeze my throat can i demonstrate here on you <laughs> how much push squeeze your throat yeah it's impossible to squeeze your throat no you're narrowing the air passageway how do you do that by moving your epiglottis the mechanism that you used to swallow food okay so ha 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 a lot of people struggle on the letter ain yeah a lot of people and they just can't get the head around what am i supposed to do with my throat yeah so when they understand the science behind it it makes it a bit easier the last one number 4 adna al halq the closest part to the mouth you got you uh qain and kha these are known as al huruf al halqiya yeah or in english the incredible halq letters and they are probably the most discussed the most taught letters yeah and they probably one of the most difficult letters why because you can't really see the makhraj you can't actually open your throat up and demonstrate it but on monday i'll bring um some toys that you could use and have a look and get a better understanding inshallah now we move over to the lisan the tongue so where your halq finishes immediately after that your tongue starts okay now the tongue remember the furthest part of the tongue middle part of the tongue front part of the tongue just like the halq is divided into three the tongue is also so starting from the furthest part of the tongue the furthest part of the tongue has two makharij yeah so aksal lisan has two makharij the first makharij is the makharij of qaf yeah so qaf would come from here first one the next one kaf yeah so you got them both there kaf and kaf then the next makhraj wasta lisan number 7 the middle part of the tongue has only one makhraj one makhraj but three letters yeah so middle of the tongue so where this part finishes Okay, the uh, aksal lisan. Once the lisan starts from there and it finishes here, say approximately where that finishes. So all of this is known as once the lisan, and here you got sheen, jim, and yeah. So these are okay, once the lisan. So once the lisan doesn't mean dead center of your um uh, tongue so a lot of people think no but what's the lisan literally means middle of your tongue so it has to be from the middle yeah you take measure out so it's impossible it's not going to be from the middle so middle is just giving an idea yeah so middle starts from where your aksa finishes and it finishes at where your 
أدنى اللسان أو طرف اللسان starts. Okay, so the whole of that, you know, where one finishes, the other one starts. There's no grey area in between. Okay, void. So once the lesson, you got three letters: Sheen, Jim, and Ya. Okay. So all three are pronounced by raising the wasta lisan to the hanakul azmi. Now the hanakul azmi, the hanak, the palate, that is a bony part. Yeah? So without raising the tongue, you're not going to get no letter. So the letter is not going to come out automatically. There has to be some sort of contact. So the tongue touches your palate, the roof of the mouth, to generate the sound. Okay? So, for example, sheen, sheen. Tongue's been raised. We're going to talk about it more in step up. Jim, j, 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 and then ya, 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 ya. The tongue is being raised to the palate, and each one's slightly different. Ya, imagine that's your tongue. That's the back, that's the front of your tongue. Your left and your right is touching the palate. And the A is whistling to the middle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay? In Sheen, shh, all of it, okay, you're using your teeth as well, you're narrowing the space, and it's got a sip out of the fashi, the fashi, spreading. So you're spreading the sound. Shh. Yeah? Jim, Jim, you're actually putting a roadblock there. Yeah. You can't read it. It stops. So the whole of your middle tongue, it rolls up like that and touches the palate. It stops all the air coming out. Ad, ad. Yeah. Hence why Kalkala is born. Ad, ad. Yeah. Same with the cough. Ab, ab. We'll talk about this on Monday. We'll go through the characteristics so we can understand the idgham better. So I'll go through it in more detail. For now, the middle of the tongue, sheen, jim, and ya, and the palate is used in order to recite the letters. So he mentions here at the bottom, when pronouncing the letter jim, the airflow stops. Yeah? However, within the letters sheen and ya, some of the air flows over the middle of the tongue. Observe the diagram on the following page. So here you look at the diagram on the following page, you can see it. Yeah? So sheen and ya, the air is coming through. In ya, it just comes out straight, smooth. Ya, ya. In sheen, it's got an extra sifa of the fashi, where it spreads. Shh. Yeah? And jim, it stops totally. The next makhraj, okay, Arabic language is known as the language of Bad. Why? This is the most difficult letter to pronounce. Okay? More, more, more difficult than your Huruf al-Halqiyya. Yeah? Huruf al-Halqiyya, I would say Ayn, Ayn is probably the hardest one that people struggle with, and Ha. Yeah? Then maybe the Ha. Ha is just silliness, basically. Anybody who reads that Ha wrong, just because they haven't studied Tajweed and they read it from the chest. So that's neglect. I'll put that down as neglect. Okay? But someone that's genuinely struggling, they don't struggle on Ain and Ha. Yeah? Again, reading Ghain from the middle of the mouth, like in Urdu, yeah? Gharib. Middle of the mouth. Again, that's negligence. That's just stupidity. That's just somebody who hasn't studied the Jewid. Yeah? So that's his own fault. So that's own fault, own fault, own fault, own fault. That here can be a difficult challenge. To correct that, you know, some people maybe they'll still struggle. Um, so that you can forgive somebody. Yeah? You can work with them, spend time on them. But these are not common mistakes. Yeah? They're mistakes due to negligence. Okay. The letter Dad, the mistake of the letter Dad is not due to um, 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 uh, somebody not studying yeah? or negligence. Letter Dad 
in fact it is a very very difficult letter to recite and pronounce and needs a lot of attention and hence why the ulama and the Arabs they called the Arabic language the language of Dad. Yeah? That all the Arabic alphabet is within the letter Dad. If somebody understands the whole Arabic alphabet, yeah, you know, it's equivalent to just to understand one letter Dad. So you learn Dad, you learn the whole Arabic alphabet. So where does this letter Dad come from? This letter Dad comes from side of your so this area here. Okay, again, so let us go, we're going to go, go through it in quite detail on Monday. Um, so it is pronounced by raising the hafa to lisan, hafa means the side of the tongue, from the right side or the left side, or both sides if you can, yeah, to the upper teeth known as al-adras, remember the al-adras, yeah, from your laughing teeth all the way to the back, yeah, they are all known as your... Um, okay, so from your the laughing teeth to the back of your um, wisdom teeth. So the whole of that side with the hafat al with the side of the tongue, is where your letter Dad is born from. The hafat al will apply pressure to the edge of the al teeth of any side. The tongue may also touch the dotted area without any pressure. Okay, but we'll talk about this on. Monday, inshallah, in more detail. That's where your letter Dad comes from. Next one, Lam, the separate makhraj. It is pronounced by connecting the Adna half of the lisan to the Muntaha half of the lisan, meaning the whole of the front area. So remember your tongue? We're talking about all of this area here. All of that area. Okay, so um, both sides with the gums, the teeth above it. Okay, so other half. So you can see the diagram there. That's where letter lam comes from. La, la. The whole semicircle, the front end is touching. Okay, la. And where is it touching? The gums of the upper teeth. La, la. Noon, however, is different. Now, there are scholars who mention that Lam, Noon, and Ra is one makhraj, but the unanimous opinion of scholars is no, they're not. There are three different makharaj. Okay? There were many qaidas in UK that had written as Lam, Noon, and Ra as one makhraj going back a few years ago. And I remember contacting every single one of them and telling them that stop uh, mentioning that, change it to Lam as a makhraj, Noon as a makhraj, and Ra as a makhraj. It is simpler, easier, and more correct. And Alhamdulillah, I think all of them have changed now. Yeah? So they all listened, and they all changed, and they made Lam as a separate makhraj, Noon as a separate makhraj, and Ara as a separate makhraj. So, Tarf um, al-Lisan again. Okay? The front part of the tongue um, has four makhraj. Okay? So this is the whole of this area, Tarf. Number noon, so for number 10, noon, it is pronounced by raising the tarf al-lisan to the gums, al-thanaya al-ulya. Al-thanaya al-ulya will be the two Bugs Bunny, Peter Rabbit teeth here, yeah? the front, two upper ones. So however, it is slightly below the makhraj of lam, okay? Slightly below the makhraj of lam, um, and when pronouncing the noon, some of the air flows to the khayshum. So where's the khayshum? Khayshum is up here. Your nasal. So if lam is recited from here, for example, noon is just below. In the No, in the So lam is right on the edge here, yeah? On the outer side. Noon is just slightly on the inside, slightly below. Yeah. So on the noon, generally, it should split between the two. Yeah, it should split between the two because actual makhraj, where the letters actually born from, is from tarf al not from here. So noon doesn't come from the nose; yeah. it comes from the tongue. That's the actual makhraj. When we talk about the ghunna, we say the makhraj of ghunna is khayshum. If you look at every single tajweed book, 
they will describe the ghunna, the makhraj of ghunna is khayshum, but they classify ghunna as a separate entity, as a separate letter, okay? Which is not actually a separate letter, because ghunna still needs a noon. So ghunna can't just appear out of thin air, yeah? So ghunna is basically part of the noon, it's a sifa, it's a characteristic of a noon, yeah? So no, in certain scenarios, you'll be doing ghunna on it. Make sense? Yeah? So the actual makhraj is here, sound must come through the mouth, with a bit of nasalization, a little bit of a touch from the nose. Yeah? Like, an, an, in, un, min, kun, can. So it's from the mouth and a bit from the nose. But as soon as you stop that from the mouth, then it becomes a gunna like, in, alladheena amanu, nu. I'll give you an Say, Amanu. Amanu. So when he said Nu, Nu, it went through the nose and then back to the mouth again. Look, Amanu. It's from both. It's got the N sound in it and it's got the Wu sound in it. Oh, okay. You don't go, Amanu. Then it won't be Nu, then would it? So it's impossible to recite it just through the Khayshum. Unless it's a Gunna. So the next one is letter Ra, okay? Now letter Ra is slightly different. Letter Ra, you're blocking the sides. Rrrr, rrr. What's happening? The front right hand side, the left front side as well, it touches the palate. And as the air comes down, it has to narrow and come through here. Make sense? Yeah. Rrr. Similar to the noon, the letter Ra is, it is pronounced by raising the tarf al-lisan to the gum of asanaya al-uliya, the two bugs bun teeth. The difference between the noon and the Ra, so we're comparing the two. Noon and the Ra, is that the makhraj of Ra is slightly further in. See, notice, Lam was outside, the furthest, then it was known, now it's the Ra, which is way inside, way inside the mouth. Slightly further into the tongue compared to the Makhraj of Noon. Note, another difference between the Noon and the Ra is that the front of the tongue is closed when reciting the Noon. And, and, the front is closed, and, and, yeah? But in the Ra, the sides are closed, the front's open. Another difference between the noon and ra. Um, so all of the air comes out of the nasal cavity. So an comes to the nose and then back to the mouth. Whereas for the letter ra, a small amount of air passes over the tongue. I'm exaggerating. The rolling, yeah? The air is coming through the middle of the mouth. So that's another reason why lam, noon, and ra are totally different. Yeah? On the Lam, even the Sifat are different. Noon Sifat are different. Noon has a Ghunna. Lam and Ra don't have a Ghunna. Ra has Takarir. Noon, you don't have that. Lam, you don't have that. So these three are totally different letters. The Makhraj are totally different. This Lam's got the whole of the front end. Yeah? The Noon's got the um, center. Then Ra's got the right and the left. It doesn't make sense to have it as Thulam, Noon, and Ra as one makhraj. It's a no-go area. Page 96. Ta, Ta, and Dal. They are pronounced by raising the tarf al to the roots. Okay? Mm -hmm. The roots meaning the usul. Usul meaning where it's actually being born from. Of the Sanaya al ulya rather than the Gums, a litha, okay? So, you've got the gums where the teeth come out from. So the actual tooth that's going in, that's the root, okay? The root of the tooth. So, ta, to, dal. So imagine, that's your gum, okay? Your litha. 
and that's your T. So that's your T here. So where's the root? That's your root. Where it's actually born from, where the tooth's going in, the actual inside. So you're going to be basically having your tongue here. Not on the left side, not on the gums. On the actual root here. So look at these three letters. Ta, to, da. Your tongue is identical in all three, the tip. Okay? How do we differentiate the sound? How do we bring about the quality of the ta, the quality of the ta, or the quality of the dal? How do we do that? Using the characteristics. Characteristics is the most neglected portion of tajweed. Okay? And especially those who know tajweed, who, who are teachers, and you could probably look at yourself and probably feel guilty that have I actually taught sifat correctly? Because sifat is a section characteristic. Without sifat, all of this I'm telling you is useless. This makharij is not enough for you to recite the Quran properly. Not at all. Somebody who studied tajweed and or oh, children that who have just done makharij, never studied sifat, the Quran is terrible. It's, you're better off not knowing it. Okay? So the quality, now if you look at the ta, ta, dal, the tip of the tongue, the makharij is identical. And it's not like there's like a one meter squared area that they can vary it a bit as well. No, they're from the same spot. But the sound, <coughs> the sound, sound sounds totally different. Okay, the actual sound of the three letters are totally different. Why? Because of the quality of characteristics, which we'll talk about, inshallah. Here, they've mentioned one on the right hand side. The back of the tongue should be raised for the letter ta. Ta, 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 ta. You're raising this back of the tongue. Remember yesterday's diagram that I showed you? When you're raising the back of the tongue, it creates a gap to um, um, make that vacuum area. Mokhra uh, number 13, tha, dha, and dhal. Tha, dha, and dhal. They are pronounced with the tarf al-lisan, the same front part of the tongue, and the edge of the sanaya ulya. So edge, now we're talking about this area here. Okay. So your tongue is coming to the edge of the teeth. But remember one more thing here. Some people like tha, and his tongue sticking out the mouth. Tha, disgusting. Yeah. So no, it shouldn't stick out. It should be at the edge. Maybe you can see the front slightly. Tha, 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 dha, dha. Yeah? But not tha, dha. So don't stick your tongue out. A bit of good manners. So they are pronounced with the tarf al and and the uh, edge of the asalaya al ulya. Note the back of the tongue should be raised for the letter dha again. Dha, dha. You're raising the back of the tongue. By raising the back of the tongue, you're creating a vacuum, okay? That gives you that full, heavy sound. Ra's al again, from the same area of the tongue, but now we're looking at the ra's, the actual tip. Remember the head? Ra's. So ra's al the actual head of the tongue, we're looking at now. So the ra's al they are pronounced, so Zain, so the name of this letter is not uh, Ze, Za. The actual name of this letter is Zain, as in the name, Zain Beaker, Zain Hood. Yeah? Zain, Zain Ul Abidin, Zain. That's the actual name of this letter. Okay? In the modern day Arabic, modern Arabs, okay? So when you go to Egypt or whichever Arab country and you go to study Arabic language, they'll start teaching you Ra, Za. Za is like a modern day bid'ah. Okay, never existed before. A region is called Zain. Okay, Zain o Zay. Zay is written as. That's Zain o Zay. They were the original names of this letter. Okay, then obviously with the modern day Arab, 
uh, when they're teaching the non Arabs, like in Pakistan and India, and everybody say Raza or Reze, Sin, Shin, Zadhal. So the Arabs adapted to that and they've changed it to Ra, Za, Sin, Shin. Okay, so the letter here we're talking about Zain, Sin, and Shin. Sorry, Sad, my mistake. Zain, Sin, and Sad. These three letters are pronounced by keeping the Ra's of Lisan, the tip of the tongue, where inside the mouth in line with the lower sanaya. So this was your upper tooth to upper tooth, right? Sanaya ulya. This is your sanaya sufla. So this is your gums here. That's your um, lower palate. That's your tongue again, yeah? So now what we're going to be doing in this part, in this scenario, we're going to keep our tongue in line with this. We're going to keep it in line with the lower teeth, not the upper teeth. Sa. So. so. Your teeth are closed, but the Ra'sul Lisan is in line with this. Or just around, hovering around where this borderline is. It won't go to these upper Sanaya Ulya. Make sense? So these are your three letters. They are pronounced from Tarf al and the edge of the Sanaya. Uh, sorry, I'm reading the wrong, wrong one. They are pronounced by the keeping the Ra'as al inside the mouth in line with the lower Sanaya. Note the back of the tongue should be raised again for the letter Sad. These are the, wherever you got these notes, raise the back of the tongue, raise the back of the tongue, you probably notice these are the full mouth letters that we describe as heavy letters. And that's your tongue finished okay the next part so we had the throat the mouth and now we're moving over to the lips a shafatain shafatain are your lips so the lips have two makharij okay two makharij only the first makharij 15 which has the most letters which is ba mean and wo Following the three letters, the, the following three letters are pronounced from using both lips. Ba, 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 ma, 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 wa, 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 wa. Both lips have to work to pronounce these three. Bit of a difference between them. Ba is pronounced joining the inner wet part of the lips. So the inner teeth, your wet part, the part of the teeth that actually touch, okay, um, towards your teeth. Ba, 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 yeah? So you know when, you, when you're angry and you shout with any word starting with a B, yeah? You spit, spit will come out slightly, yeah? Why would it come out? It's the wet part you're using of your lips, yeah? And then you're pushing all that force and all that long power, getting all that air out, yeah? The meme is from the dry part, ma, ma, yeah? So you never spit on meme. So you can shout your mom's name as loud as you want, Mama. You never spit. Yeah? Shout Baba, you always spit in. <laughs> the next one is Wow. Wow, again, both of your um, lips are used in a circular fashion in a round tube form. Wow. The next makhraj is 16, which is the letter Fa. Now, Fa, again, is from the Shafatain, but only one Shaf is used, one lip is used. Okay? So what you're using, fa, fa, the lower one, with the edge of the thanaya, ulya. So fa is pronounced by joining the wet part of the lower lip with the edge of the thanaya, al ulya. Okay? Then your 16 makharij, and your last one, the 17th one, is what? Al khayshum, which is your nasal cavity. Okay? The just the space from your nose. So ghunna, if you notice, they've given it a separate makhraj. They've not put it with noon. Okay? But the khayshum only exists not just on noon, but also meem. Meem also. Yeah? 
And that's your makharij all complete. Any question? That's quite good, one o'clock. Any question on makharij? Studying makharij on their own is useless. They won't benefit you. Sifat is what makes... Um, it's not even just polish. There is no, without sifat, there's nothing. How would you know how to... How to like, little dot comes from the side of the mouth. How do you do it? Da, da, do, da. Yeah. It's impossible. Impossible. Especially once you've done the sifat, and then we look at the letters, and then you'll be like, yep. Karin Sahib, we agree. We give up. Because most people, um, even me as well, when I first started teaching, I was about 19, 20, 20 years old. I used to teach the Makharij, this section, very beautifully take my time. When you come to Sifat, you won't study, no questions, okay, just, okay. And I used to just flip and carry on. Because I never understood it myself. It's so difficult. How do you actually explain it? How does it actually work? So whichever teacher I sat with had the same, same issue. But especially those who are teaching in madrasas or in schools or at home, you're teaching your kids. Sifat al-Huruf is very, very important. More important than, oh, this is Izhar, this is Iqlab, this is Idgham. Why? Izhar and Iqlab and Idgham, you could miss it. You're not going to get nothing, nothing's going to happen to you. It's a minor mistake you've made. Yeah? But take one sifa away. Yeah? That's a major mistake. Why? Because that letter won't be that letter no more. Yeah? Like, the sheen has tafashi. A shh. If I took that away from sheen, would it be sheen anymore? If I went, for example, um, I read from the middle of the mouth. I've taken it away. That's no longer a sheen. If it's no longer a sheen, it's no longer an Arabic word. If it's no longer an Arabic word, there's definitely no Quran. If it's definitely no Quran, then Allah SWT never spoke it. Full stop. There's no argument. You can't win. But when it comes to, for example, I should have done uh, izhar here. Yeah? Surat al ladina an'amta alayhim. Minor mistake. An'amta. But we will, Imam Sabji, you made that mistake. We'll pick that mistake out straight away. But that was a minor mistake you made. You know, let him go. He's your Imam. You know, he's not an angel, he's a human. He can make mistakes. But they're minor mistakes. So, minor mistakes, especially when we're teaching children, we're educating them not to make the minor mistakes. But the major mistakes, we're making them ourselves and we're not even looking out for them in our students. Yeah? So it's important, hence why every Tajweed book you study, they will all start off with major mistakes, minor mistakes. Lahn al-Jali, Lahn al-Khafi. Always. So it's really important. We'll do that on Monday, inshaAllah. Barakallah feet. Assalamu alaikum.